Welcome to Steve Reads Bible Stories. Reverend Steve Janes reads Bible stories while pointing out keys and principles on how to read the Bible. Hi, my name is Steve Janes, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 334, that you may know God's calling. God has been calling every man, woman, and child since before the world began. He's been calling every year, every month, every week and day for every man, woman, and child to hear God's word and to get salvation saved and to receive Holy Spirit. The teaching I'm doing this morning, I'm entitled, That You May Know God's Calling. Go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, and this was the theme of the weekend in the Word. I started working this material before then, and I'm still working it. The last podcast, number 333, was on, That You May Know the Hope. And that was the teaching I did before we went out there. And this one here is that you may know God's calling. And in Ephesians 18, 1, 18, it says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Being enlightened means keep getting more, more light, more understanding. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. That we may know the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. God has been calling every man, woman, and child since before the world began. He has been calling every year, every month, every week, every day. God's been calling. From the beginning of time, God has been calling. Now, sometimes very few throughout history have heeded that call. And then in some years, months, or days, many of them have answered that call. But the call has always been going out. God has designed this earth, this world, to, for people to want to know about God. It says in Romans that there is no excuse. People say, well, I don't know. They, they have no excuse. God has been calling. Every man, woman, and child is called to hear God's word. And to get salvation and receive Holy Spirit, making them whole. Every person has that call. God is calling. And so much more. God has special assignments that he is called also. God has had special assignments just for you. He's called you. And a call means an invitation. Being in, you're, you're invited. It's always by the freedom of your will, but you're, you've been called to do special things for God. And you either can say yes or no. It's freedom of will every time. Go to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 11. And we're going to look at some of these things that I was sharing with you. God's been called. And in verse 29, it says, For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. When God calls you, he doesn't take it back. When he gives you a gift, he doesn't take it back. And he doesn't repent that he did it. He's called you. Now you can either do it or not do it. It's that simple. Throughout life, we either do it or we don't do it. But God has been calling. 
Go to 1 Corinthians, just a few pages further. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I want to start in verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. See, Paul's writing this. It's God's word. This is what God wants us to know. He says, for Christ sent me. For Christ sent me not to baptize. So his calling wasn't to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. When we talk about Jesus Christ and him being crucified, to them it's foolishness. That's what they believe. But unto us which are saved. In other words, born again, have Holy Spirit. It is the power of God. When we hear that, it's the power of God. It's part of that calling. Since before the world began, God has been calling. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And I'll say, yes, he has. They're so smart, they don't even believe in God. That's foolish. To not believe in God, not to get born again, is absolutely foolishness. I can't help it that I think you're foolish if you don't want to believe the word. Because there's so much promises and principles and precious things available to us. I will take that calling every time. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, and it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It's been a call lately, you know, well, we can't do it the old way. We got to do it the new way. There's a new modern way to move the word. That's foolish talk. It is. It's foolish. God, by the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. You know how you move the word? By preaching it. By saying it. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called invited right and have heeded that call both from the judeans and from the greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god that's where our wisdom lies in. because the foolishness of god is wiser than men god in his great foolishness is wiser than men first of all god isn't foolish if he was, even his foolish thoughts are so much greater than man's thoughts. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. By trusting in God, we're stronger than any force on the earth or what the world wants to promote. For you see your calling, your invitation, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. And then it says, our call, that's in italics, scratch it. Everyone is called. Since before the foundations of the world, God has been calling. God, has, you know something? When we see somebody and we start to talk to them about God's word or God, they've already been called. God has been calling them somehow, right? They either have to decide or not. Some years, very few decide. Sometimes, many say, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. We just do it. We just speak the word. 
verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. Like the foolishness of preaching. Or going to a Sunday morning fellowship. We're going to a family camp. or going to somewhere to hear the word. Yea, the things which are not. To bring to nothing things that are. For no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh, no earthly thinking. Which is sensual and devilish. But of him, of God, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. There's the wisdom. The wisdom that we have comes from God and his word and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. These things are the meaty things. These are the wise things right here. That according as, as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. That's what we're to do. God has been calling out, but sometimes few accept it. But sometimes many have accepted it. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1, it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. The word vocation is called. God has called us. Walk worthy of your calling. Wherein you were called, you were invited. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. That spirit is the new birth spirit, Holy Spirit, the one that has the power, nine manifestations to do the works that Jesus Christ did in greater, that one, in the bond of peace. For there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called, once again, called in one hope of your calling. We've been called. I'm hoping that you're getting to see that we've been called. And we've been called. And God's still calling. God's calling us through his word. Let's go to Philippians 3. We're going to start in verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind, whether good or bad, doesn't matter, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We should always be seeking to do our utmost for his highest, because that's what we've been called to. Every believer has been given the word of reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation, all the sonship rights. We've been called to that. And we all have special assignments, especially for you. Verse 15 says, let us therefore as many as be perfect or fully taught or fully initiated be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. That's uh, revelation. That's what you learn about your special assignment by God giving you revelation. Let's go to Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, in chapter one, verse eleven. Wherefore. Also, I pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of calling. It says this calling, I'd say his calling. 
if you're going to put a word there, of calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his. That, I think, is rightly supplied. His goodness and the work of believing with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty wonderful. We should walk worthy of this calling and be cognizant that God has called us. And he's calling every year, every month, every week, every day. I'm going to show you this in the word. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 6. And I got to read a section here that really explains this very well, starting in verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul, writing to Timothy, says, I want to put you in remembrance that you remember your call that I did when I put my hands on you by ordination. His special assignment was he was ordinated by Paul. And he wants to put him in remembrance of this. Verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Be not, not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Don't be ashamed of who you are with Christ in you. Why would you? But that's what he's saying. Don't be, don't be ashamed of me. The world may think it's got me in a bad place, but don't be ashamed of what I say and what I speak. I may be in prison at this time, but don't be ashamed of what I teach. And you go teach the same stuff. That's what it's going to say. Verse 9, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. See, God's the one that did the calling. We just answer the call, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. That's why I said from before the world began, God has been calling us. Some of the calling is to do what we see in God's word and some special assignments just for you. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light. And the word light means understanding through the gospel. That's where you get the understanding. That's why we spend time in the word. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher. Hey, here's Paul's special assignment. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. What's your special assignment? Well, don't ask me, ask God. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which, he, which I have committed unto him against that day. I accepted the assignment. I have called, and I'm fully persuaded that God will do his part. What God says he will do. Hold fast that form of sound words. Where are you going to find those sound words? Oh, in God's word, you're not going to find it on the internet? You're not going to find it on TV or news? This is where it is which thou hast heard of me 
in believing and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Spirit which dwelleth in you. You, you uh, want a little help? You want a little comfort? That's the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, that allows you the ability to do the works that Jesus Christ did in greater. That allows you to have manifestations, to know the score, to be able to do your calling. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Bill Jealous and Homogeles, the Lord give mercy unto the house of uh, Ophesus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. As we continue to heed the calling of God, to let others know about it, that we can fill in the gaps at times, we can refresh one another. Verse 17, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. And the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. In how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Believers know those that work with God. They know it. They see it. Because they're called also. They got the same goals. The same aspirations. Chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Paul was asking Timothy to, to find men that would be able to teach others also. I think I'll do that too. I think that's an assignment that I can handle or I want to handle. I'm willing to do it. God's been calling. At this time, a lot of people weren't heeding in the call from God. They rejected the man of God. But some stay believing. I want to be one of those. I was going to stop right there, but there's more written here. Look at verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, or a good athlete. No man that war entangles himself with the affairs of this life. I'm not going to be too concerned about the affairs of this life. I'm not going to get all wrapped up in that. I got another calling. My calling is to get God's word out to people. I'm going to tell them that they can be saved. I'm going to tell them they can be whole. I can tell them they can be healed. They can be delivered. I'm not going to tell them that anything else. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier, athlete, if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully or according to the word. The husbandman, it's a cultivator, a farmer, that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruit. We got to be partakers of the fruit before we can give it to anyone else. If you're going to give a sore throat to people, you got to have it. We've got the word so we can give it to others. What's the best thing that I can give anybody? Verse 7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Paul said this. He wrote this to Tim. He says, consider it. Consider these things, and God will work with you. That's how you find out your special assignment. God tells you. Go to Hebrews, if you'd like. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. 
Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly what? We're partakers of the heavenly calling. I got the heavenly calling, but we all did. We're partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, our calling. Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that buildeth all things is God. See, the word house here is really an analogy talking about the temple, and it's a, which in another analogy is talking about all the believers that make up the temple of God. See, some of us help put a piece in, but God puts the building together, the temple of God, the household of God. See that? Verse 5. For Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. That's in Ephesians. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm until the end. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today ye will hear his voice. That's why it's every day. God is calling every day. He's called every year. Some years better than others. He's called every month. Some months better than others. He's called every week. Some weeks better than others. But God has been calling. That's what I'm trying to share there. All right, let's go to Second Peter. This is where I'm going to close. Second Peter. We're going to start in chapter 1, verse 1. And to really share this, I have to read the whole context of what we're talking about. Because it makes more sense that way. Could have just pulled out these calling verses, but I wanted to share with you all that we have we've been called simon peter a servant and an apostle of jesus christ there's his special assignment to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of god and our savior jesus christ we share on these precious promises we share with them. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, which comes from the word of God. The number one thing that we need to think about is the word. What you think about most of the time in your mind is, is what you'll talk about, is what you'll be sharing with people, is what you'll be living. The mind guards the heart. And we are in charge of our minds. And we want to think on things above, on things of the word. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We have all things that pertain to life and godliness. How exciting is that? Through the knowledge of the world. No, and the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. We don't get lousy little twiddling promises. We get exceeding, no, exceeding great and precious promises by that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature. See, we get a heavenly nature, a spiritual nature. That's what it's talking about. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We're out of the world. 
I know the the ending of this world is, and I'm glad I'm not going to be part of it. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your belief in virtue. See, we're to have all diligence to our believing. And we add to it virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, the knowledge of God's word. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, we're patient. And to patience, godliness. Godliness means is sometimes translated a vital uh, relationship with God. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. We're to be kind one to another. And to brotherly kindness, charity, the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. If we keep those things in our mind, we're going to be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And that means he can't see up close either, far off or close. And that forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Therefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling sure. Make your calling sure and election sure the calling is like god calling and the election is us choosing it in some translations it's that word election is choice verse 11 says for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ therefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. That's why I'm sharing it. I'm putting you in remembrance. You've been called. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. While there, sign up for our newsletter. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.